The April update for the Samsung Galaxy S24 series arrived yesterday. I'm using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra already with the April update from yesterday. Quite good timing, it's still the 27th of March, so we are again living in the future, <laughs> thanks to Samsung updates. And guys, I wanna start with my test review video first, start with the changelog. If you have been following my channel closely, you know I am sometimes criticizing Samsung for that. Oh, let me share why. So, what we know from the update information is that we're using AXCA CSEO firmware version and it's almost 1000 megabytes. So, for sure, it's just a bit more than just security updates. Usually, when security updates arrive, they're like 200, 300, 400 megabytes. The security patch level is from the 1st of April. And we have the standard chain log here, so overall stability, functions improved, security, and blah, blah, it's the standard stuff. Learn more at here. So the moment you click here, well, we're gonna see nothing here, guys. So on the official Samsung site where change log should be described, we just see the previous version, which was the March one, AXBG. And what we have to do, guys, we have to visit 1,000 other sites and look at to 1,000 tweets to see what apparently some people working for Samsung are posting somewhere on the internet, in this case, on the Samsung Community Forum in Korea, right? And even on this forum, there is just a picture leaked, and there is one guy saying, hey, the software update is here, a brief translation, optimized codes related to camera quality and usability have been applied, a stabilization code applied to terminal operation, it all doesn't really make sense. And then you have to visit a bunch of sites, like in this case the Android Police, to just try to understand a bit more, because some people really are giving information away on Reddit and everywhere else, and they're saying, hey, the changes include camera prosthetic optimizations, low light images and colors in the expert or app, and enhanced text clarity when using zoom in photo mode. Another improvement here should be the addition of a new 480 by 480 resolution for instance slow-mo, but you pretty much see where I'm going with this. Like, I have and I've been criticizing Samsung of not being able to provide proper changelog. Sometimes they don't provide any changelog whatsoever, not only in firmware updates, but also when you visit the Galaxy Store. Sometimes there will be some applications for you to update. The moment you go there, there's gonna be either almost nothing, right? And sometimes, since Samsung are in the good mood to bless us, well, we're gonna get something like what's new. Right, like in this case. In most of the cases, we just get treated with the standard stuff, which is like bug fixing. So this doesn't surprise me at all. But what does surprise me is that yesterday, I did some samples with the March update with some zoom shots, specifically to test the clarity when text is present. Then I updated to the April firmware, redid that and matched my S24 Ultra with the S23 Ultra to understand is finally S24 Ultra is able to catch up on the zoom quality of the S23 Ultra. So my video is there, you can check it. In a nutshell, I think Samsung really were able to marginally improve the 10X handling. Now the 10X here, which is of course not purely optical, like here, that's the S23 Ultra. 10X here, now a bit better, but everything that goes beyond 10X, like 20X, 30X, 60, 100, is better, really far better on the S23 Ultra. And this is the sacrifice that has to be made, getting rid of the 10X camera here and just getting a new 5X sensor. So I think still this is debatable a bit and really some people love it, some people hate it. I myself am sometimes loving it, sometimes hating it. Uh, yeah, it is not an ideal situation. But now back on the April update, since we've already discussed the change log and introduction. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is a test from the navigation. On the menu itself, right, you always know I start with this animation, not a problem at all. I say this all the time. There has been times S21 Ultra, you might remember, and also S22 Ultra, guys, this animation was not flawless. Specifically, the one in the landscape mode was causing a lot of problems. And now I'm happy to report that Samsung are finally doing this better. So it seems that it works quite nice. When we scroll to the left, we have the standard stuff like Google Discover or Samsung News. And then we have the option to do something on our main screen. Now, if I go to the left here, I'm gonna get access to my Google. Again, the animation here was not the smoothest one, but I think it's still usable. Going to the right will allow me to access all my other screens going up will give me the up drawer clicking here to just check the animation all nice and of course just scrolling down will give me access to my notifications which of course i have left to show you guys now speaking of notifications standard stuff 
right? Not a problem at all, by the way, with the animation. We see that also blur is gradually applied. So, so far, so good. What we can do here, swipe left, close it, swipe right, close it as well, or clear all. One more swipe down will get us the quick toggles. One more swipe will get us the full menu. I kind of like this one. Connectivity here, all the toggles display related settings and smart things uh, and access of all your devices. So it's a nice way to control things. One more test on the home screen. I want to go inside the settings, guys. I want to see what is the latest version. So the one home latest version with the April update is still the version 15.1013. By the way, there were a lot of updates already, maybe related to the interpreter because it was some TTS and etc. But I do believe also Samsung is very heavily working to be able to release One X 6.1 for the S23 Ultra. And we know the news, guys. It should be released in the next couple of days. So expect very soon, hopefully also a Warnia 6.1 review on my S23 Ultra and how it compares to the S24 Ultra. Now let's check some of the blur. All right, nice and gradually applied. Okay, very responsive by the way, no issues so far. Volume rocker, click here. All right, not a problem at all. Let's go inside to developers options to show you the RAM usage. So right now I'm already using almost eight gigabytes of my 12 gigabytes. And if I show you one day ago, the average memory usage is seven gigabytes. A total I have 12 gigabytes. If I click here on the memory usage, yeah, the usual culprits, of course, Android OS using almost two gigabytes and then the system UI using almost half a gigabyte. And then we have Samsung keyboard and of course, one year home and then Facebook guys, Facebook and Chrome are also using a lot of your memory. If I go just, for, let's say for today, six hours, you're gonna pretty much see it's the same statistics. Now guys, let me show you the recent menu. You know what I do like this, boom, everything here. I didn't close anything, just wanna show the animations. Very fluid, by the way, one more time. Okay, everything nice. Now I'm gonna close it because in the next few tests, I wanna show you guys the apps opening and apps closing animations. But first we start with folder, right, folder. One more time, very, very nice, by the way, no issues whatsoever. There has been times when even this was not working great. Now, let's go inside, let's open Telegram, all right, scroll down a bit, not a problem at all. And by the way, I do love this animation when you exit, see here, boom. This doesn't happen on the One UI 6 on the S23 Ultra, and I really hope that with One UI 6.1 we're gonna get this new closing animation also for the S23 Ultra. Let's also open Messenger, all right, going outside, open Facebook, Wow, Facebook, very fast, by the way. Okay, then let's open X, loading X. See how it scrolled down? Yeah, actually not that bad. It's probably never gonna be really how people want it to be, like on iOS, but I don't think that's a problem of Samsung or Android. So, now, very important, guys, let's open Instagram, scroll down a bit. I think no problems with browsing things. The only problem that you might see is when you go to the left, invoking here. Uh, the camera, why? Because when you get down to the viewfinder, uh, your refresh rate will drop from 120 hertz, which is this one here, to 60 hertz, because apparently the viewfinder of Samsung is locked to 60 hertz. Don't ask me why. I guess there is a very reasonable explanation. And yeah, this is how it works. By the way, it's not so problematic at all. It's kind of smooth. And you, by the way, know if you shoot pictures with the S24 Ultra, they will appear with the HDR on the screen. And when you upload them to Instagram, they will also be with HDR, which is actually quite nice. Now let's check the camera animations. All right, the opening was very nice. Switching all the modes, not a problem at all. One more time, so opening and closing really astonishingly fast. This was not the case some years ago. And now guys, we can also try to test the shutter speed. So I'm using standard settings with no focus on the shutter speed, it's just the standard. Yep, and you can just see, right? by the way, actually it's not so slow, of course, there's gonna be some compromise with the quality, but what we will check right now, guys, what happens when we go to the video and we move from zero to six to 10, all right? So pay attention to the transition, okay? All right, is this a bit better from what we've seen before? So zero six one, okay, zero six one, zero six two, which is a crop. Okay, so one X and two X, you know, that's main camera. And I would say going from the ultra wide to the main camera, is not that bad. Now let's see what happens when we go from the ultra wide to the 3x. Mm, not that bad at all. And now to the 5x. So I do have a feeling that this might be a bit better. I need to check my old video, the one that I shot while I was in Thessaloniki. I think the transition there was really worse, but now also maybe a manual one. All right. 
Okay, yeah, well, you know, it's not gonna be like iPhone level and even Xiaomi level. All right, you can see here, it is already not so great when you just test it like this. But it is what it is, guys. Let me try to close everything and now let's open widgets. So opening the weather widgets, scrolling down. Very nice, by the way. I do love the weather and also the closing of the weather widgets. The animations are so nice. Let's open also the Spotify. This widget is problematic. Yeah, I don't think now if it's Samsung or Spotify, but sometimes it's worked like this. Sometimes I think the closing is a bit abrupt. I don't know really when what works, but so far this is the results that I'm getting while opening the Spotify widgets and subsequently closing it. Now, going back on my home screen, guys, let me show you something. I'm now inside my phone on the home screen. Now I'm gonna lock my phone going into my OS on display. All right, so. This here is lock screen. Pay attention, now we have the new fancy thing showing the wallpaper on the always on display. The moment the screen deems, this is already always on display. So lock screen, okay, always on display. Lock screen, always on display. Now let's try to unlock it from here. Wow, this was very fast. I still believe that the S24 Ultra and the S23 Ultra, they have the best fingerprint read scanner, guys. This is amazing. Ultrasonic, nothing really lights here, specifically in night. This is why I don't really want to use phones with an optical one during the night. Now, let me show you some benchmarks. I did some testing with the Geekbench, and in fact, I like it because I can show you also my other results. My latest test was from today, so 2,223 on the single core score and 6,700 on the multi-core score. What I do like is, check here, guys, my other tests, 18 of March, 28 of February, 18 of February, right? It's very consistent. And I was not getting the same result with my S23 Ultra unit. I'm not sure what the reasons were, optimization, something else. Right now, this seems to be very stable and solid, and I like it. Let's speak about the battery. Yesterday, at some point, I updated, so it's not so relevant. Today, guys, it is absolutely relevant. So I started early in the morning. So far, I got three hours and 50 minutes screen on time, and I still have 47% of a battery. So I would say this is not so bad at all. Let's see the distribution. We have Facebook, Viber, always on display. By the way, always on display really takes something between two to sometimes 5% of a battery. So if you want to get more battery, yeah, you know what to do with always on display, maybe just use it on top. Geekbench, of course, because I did this test and etc. and etc. Now let's go back on my home screen and check for something. I want to check the edge panel animation. All right. And now I want to open this combination where I have Telegram and X, so apparently I can swipe, I can change the position, I can just make one full screen, and you know about this thing, right? I can decide to also minimize it, so I can have, I think, up to five applications that are minimized, and it all works quite nice, no big problems at all, guys. You can move it around, you can also use your phone with two fingers. So far, so good. This really feels like a mini PC. Let's go inside the security and check update. Why? Because you see the security update is indeed from the 1st of April, but the Google Play system update is from the 1st of January. And I do believe that this is another one, I think the February. So yes, now the moment I restart, I will probably get the February one. I'm not sure why this is not really bundled the way it is. By the way, let me just crank up the brightness so you can see how bright it can go. So yesterday when I migrated from March to April, of course I was outside testing the camera for them zoom photos with uh, testing the cloud. As you can check the video here, my screen dimmed and apparently the phone overheated a bit because I was not able to just get more brightness and then i got this message maximized for best viewing in bright light but to prevent your device from overheating you cannot increase your brightness any further so just know this uh, if you're outside and there is sun involved and the screen appears not so bright then most probably the phone is struggling with heat and of course this is one of the mechanisms to conserve the phone and longevity right if you have been watching my videos all the tests that i'm doing with emulation with the benchmark with the performance testing and the brutal testing you know that samsung they have their own take they really don't want to put a lot of heat on the phone 41 42 44 celsius is kind of the extreme and some of the chinese phone can go up to 55 and just really burn your hands and die on you but give you that nice frame rate guys I really hope that this is everything you wanted to see in this video, but I know that some things are missed. If you want to see other things in this type of test, let me know down below in the comments. And that's it. Please stay safe. Thanks so much for watching. VST over and bye.